I have uh, my demo site up, and this is going to be a, a, the newest version of a video demonstrating the Yoast SEO plugin now in the fall of 2015 because it has been updated as actually so recently uh, that it changed literally when I was demonstrating it in, in the previous class today. That's how often these plugins are updated. So hopefully this video will have a little bit of staying power because it the update actually just came through yesterday. So um, another uh, addition to the Satchel collection here. It's one of my students that exclusively just watches my videos and doesn't come to class. So I'm in the dashboard on my WordPress demo site. You guys can be working with me uh, with your project sites. And as soon as I get this installed and sort of walk you through the basics of it, in the demo site, I'm then going to revert over to one of my actual websites that I have up and running to show you how it really works. So we've spent a lot of time, well, two lectures, talking about SEO and the ins and outs of it. And a lot of the things that you can do for SEO, generally speaking for websites, don't need a plugin. In fact, some of them aren't even related to the site, like setting up your site with Google Webmaster, which is now the Google Search Console. So in week 12, I don't have a whole lot of content <coughs> posted yet, um, but if we go to the content for week 12, you're gonna see two links and soon to be three with the addition of this video. Our notes for this week are not set up like the notes for previous weeks. I'm actually using Yoast's blog as your notes for this week. So the first uh, selection here directly links to his blog. Um, which, let me just minimize some of this stuff right here. So he has a section of his blog that's specific to WordPress SEO and specific to this section of his blog, he actually has a table of contents that goes through a variety of things that you need to consider when you're optimizing a site. And one of the first things that you can do, we're gonna do without even installing the plugin. So this has to do with the actual permalinks in your site. And he talks about it a little bit here with URL. So we know URL stands for Uniform Resource Locator. We know that when we studied SEO thus far that having keywords, domain level keywords and domain level optimization, like something in your URL or the domain itself that associates with the content in the site is a good thing. It's not gonna make or break your optimization. If you don't have that, it's okay. But because you're using WordPress right from the get-go, and this is one of these things that sort of just slips through the cracks. The fact that I'm teaching you this in week 12 of the term is kind of silly. I should have taught you this right at the beginning. I think I went through this at the beginning, but didn't make the note to you that this is where things should be set for the best optimization. So in your dashboard, without having the plugin, you just go to settings, and under settings, you go to permalinks. And if you haven't gone in and changed this, a lot of you might still be set to the default day or time, month or day. It's like there's a variety of ways you can do this in WordPress. And what you want to use is the method that will provide the content in the URL that's the most readable by search engines. That's best for optimization. And that would be post name. You can also use custom structure if you want to like have categories but not have category in the URL, but I, I think it's just, it's safe enough just to do post name and leave it at that. And Yoast talks about why that is here and he talks about how um, you should change the setting to post name. If you, want to, uh, if you want to include the category, you can use custom structure, but the main purpose of this is so that you have actual worded content in your URLs versus the other stuff, which would be numbers or dates or just kind of default type stuff. Okay, so, and I will check to see that you've done this. And that's why in your breakdown for the project marking, there are points associated with your URLs, your optimized slug URLs. So everything that I'm showing you now up into the last few weeks, it all connects back to this, this big list of 100 po possible points. <coughs> so if you have your project sites up and running, go and do that right now. Go into settings, permalinks, change to post name. Now, do you guys understand why? Does anybody have any questions about this? You get why, right? Because I can put um, pursuant to the example I'm going to show you today with my site, I can put something like vacant land 
in there where it says sample post. <coughs> and that's going to be a lot better for me with SERP, with the SERP, as opposed to putting like P equals one, two, three with a question mark. That doesn't mean anything to a search engine. Okay? Now, throughout a WordPress site, there are things like this that need to be adjusted and affected so that the search engines can see what your content is all about. And this is why it took me so long to transition to WordPress from a standard HTML formatted site because with an HTML formatted site, it was really easy and obvious where you could put all the meta tags and all the keyworded content for the search engines to see it whenever the, your site was, was indexed. So now with WordPress, because it's a PHP database driven site, when it first came out, the, these type of plugins weren't available and it wasn't as optimizable. And for years now, it has been. And one of the top plugins to use for optimizing the content in your site is the Yoast plugin. So I'm gonna go to plugins and I'm gonna go to add new and I'm assuming you haven't added it yet. And this is coincidentally the plugin I asked you to add on the test just as an exercise in adding plugins. And it was kind of a precursor for what we are gonna do here. So search Yoast SEO. Yoast with a Y, it's like toast with a Y, okay? Spelled the same way. And the first thing you see with the traffic lights, that's the plugin that you want. Now if you look through my playlist, you'll see an older version of this, which I'll probably leave up there. Um, and the, the way the plugin works and sort of the layout of, of how you can optimize the pages and posts, it's, it's, it was very different last year. It was even, it was slightly different than in the summer when I redid the video again, and now it's, now it's even more different because it was just updated yesterday. So I'm gonna install this plugin, okay? Now, as you can see, it was kind of grayed out because I already had it installed, so when you click on it, it just says latest version. Here, you know what, hang on. I wanna still install it. There, see, I, I still had it in there, so I'm just deleting it so I can reinstall it with you guys. Okay, so if you're on a Mac and you're still using the localhost format here, if you're still using XAMPP, you will have had to change your folder permissions by now in order to install plugins, install themes. I'm assuming you guys have sorted this out. Go back to week five, all the codes are there. It shows you exactly what to do. Remember, with the codes in week five where it has WordPress as your root directory, that will have to be altered to match the new root directory for the codes to actually work and enable you to install plugins. Okay, with GoDaddy, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff, Mac or PC, because it's all set up on the remote host and you shouldn't have any issues going in and putting a plugin in. So Yoast SEO install. Okay, so this plugin is going to assist in my optimizing the content in a WordPress site. It's not like it's stuff you wouldn't be able to do if you knew how to code it into the PHP, but the plugin obviously makes it dramatically easier. So once the plugin is in, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but like I talked about last week, how certain themes and certain plugins will change how your dashboard looks, the, the, the sidebar menu in your dashboard. And this plugin is no exception as it adds its own menu, okay? Now, if you go under settings, um, you really won't see any, some of these um, smaller base sort of not front end plugins that do things that you can see in the content of the page, they, they often fall into settings. The SEO plugin from Yoast has its own menu. A lot of these do. So I'm gonna head in there in just a second. Um, because I'm on this, this is just kind of a, a little side note. Um, I saw a couple students had actually gone into this. Uh, it depends on the theme you have, but I know, I know the, the appearance of your dashboard and the background color of the actual dashboard and the way your menu looks, you can actually change that in appearance. Um, oftentimes, if you go into, uh, see, I'm not sure with the theme that I'm running that I'm able to do that, but a lot of themes let you actually change how the dashboard looks. Um, so I just wanted to make that note, but um, we're, gonna, we're talking about this today. So let's get into the SEO plugin. Now that it's installed, we can go to the general info. And because I'm taking you through this 
assuming that you haven't used it before, we're gonna go through a bit of this tour. So the Yoast plugins are always really good about information. So the same way he has this blog that's constantly updated, he also has um, a lot of this information like, like put directly into the plugin. So if you start the tour, it takes you through a variety of information. So it talks about general settings. So, so now we're on the general tab. So he's talking about the settings for that tab. And it talks about how you can put your company info. You're going to need to add some info here. If you're using Google Webmaster, this is where you can connect your account. Um, you can set security for this particular plugin and what it has access to. And then you can get more information on, on the plugin itself. Okay, moving on to the next tab, which would have to do with title and metas. You can change things site-wide in there. You can decide. So this plugin is going to get really, really picky about how your URL is set up based on what you give the page as a title and how those have to match. You don't want to make the URL one thing and then make the page title something else. Search engines don't like that. And I used to do that all the time with HTML sites. And I didn't realize that that was negative for my optimization. So this is the character I will use specifically to separate a multi-word page title. Uh, you'll see me do this in a second, okay? So it talks about and it talks about how you can use actual templates and settings inside the, the plugin. I never do that. Archives and other, I never get into stuff like that, but I do pay attention to the title separator. It'll connect you to all your social stuff. So you can enable, you can enable, Facebook has some optimization type of stuff. They actually have a graph like this graph functionality with Facebook where it can kind of track your content. Um, there's applications that, that can run and, and get insights from Facebook, which aren't feeds, but <coughs> you're gonna have a Facebook profile likely where you're talking about the same type of content that you're discussing on this web page, and you'll still will help you track this. So um, you can also bring in, the purpose of this too is that when you bring in content from these social platforms, if you've connected them here in Yoast, Yoast will then automatically give you the opportunity to optimize that content or by default, we'll be optimizing some of it for you. So it talks about a few of the platforms here and it allows you to link um, all eight of these here, okay? And I only use Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram on an ongoing basis. I have a, I have a pretty heavy LinkedIn profile set up and I never go in there. I mean. It, that's that's obviously more of a professional networking thing. It's for real estate. I really should, but I just don't. I don't. I don't find that it benefits me much in real estate. I'm not trying to connect with other realtors. I'm trying to get clients. Um, so I would focus on these top three, which happen to be the top three. Uh, I don't use MySpace anymore. It's not 1980. So and then these other ones just no. And I do have a YouTube channel too for my real estate stuff. So I would put that in there as well. Okay, now I'm not, for my demo site, I'm not doing any of this right now, but so with... copy the URL right out of the... Uh, yeah, well, I could go through every platform now and show you, but within every platform, you should have a specific URL that's based on your handle, like your username. So if I go to facebook.com, for example, forward slash my username, there should only be one of my username. That's the way username works. A username works. So when I go there... That's my URL, that's my domain. It goes to my profile. If I wanted to use my real estate one, am I logged in? Hang on. What if you want to use like a page though? Like what if it's like, say it's a um, You give it the page URL. It's still fine, give it the Facebook page URL. I think, you know, I don't know though because it doesn't have a, a company page in Facebook. That's a great question. Why do you have to ask that in the middle of the video? That's, a, that's an awesome question. Um, we should Google that at the end of the video. Uh, we're going to Google that because that's what, what Jordan's asking is, this is my company page for real estate. And it doesn't have the same exact type of functionality that my personal profile does. There's a lot more going on here in Facebook, my personal profile, OK? Um, I don't use Facebook that much. I mainly have it so that I can have this. As funny as that sounds, I don't, I don't even respond to my messages. I, I hadn't really kept up with my friend requests in a while. I'd, I had like 200 some friend requests, like people that had requested to be my friend. 
I'm not trying to sound cool. It doesn't mean anything, right? It doesn't. It, it, Facebook is constantly shoving down your throat who you should be friends with. And a lot of people saw me and said, I know Sloan, and they just click on it, right? I know a lot of people in Grand Bend. I know a lot of people back in Michigan from when I was playing in the band in high school and stuff. And I just, I've never connected with any of them since I started my Facebook account. So I went back in when I finally started using it, and I had like hundreds of requests. It was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, that's a good question. We'll come. Don't let me forget to come back to that at the end of the video. Uh, but but mainly you want you want your main profile there, uh, and Instagram. You know, I wonder if it's the same with Instagram because Instagram I hardly <coughs> ever go on to it uh, when I'm not on a mobile device, and that's the whole idea with Instagram. No, it totally is. It's the same thing. It's just. And that's the way most of these platforms will work. It'll be the the base level domain forward slash your username. And that's what you want in there, okay? So still going through the tour here. Oh, I didn't want to stop the tour yet. Um, let's go back to the tour. Okay, so we got through that. We were through that. We're on to social. So this deals with the site map. I really, you know, if you set up your site with the Google Search Console, it's going to have a site map there, and then, and then Yoast is going to ask you. <coughs> That's one of the things you need to remember too. So, right, guys, I need you to be paying attention right now. Um, when you're using this plugin, like a plugin like this that is so crucial, just like go through it like this, like I'm doing right now, and take a bit of time to look at this stuff. So, this talks about the site maps. What I will tell you about this is, as soon as you set up with Webmaster, with Google Search Console, and then you connect your site through the Yoast plugin to the Search Console, you then will be given the option. It will, every time you log into your site then, these messages will pop up in the top there, up here. Yoast will always be giving you messages. And one of my messages, when I first set up my sites in the Google Search Console is, do you want to use the Google Search Console map, or do you want Yoast to make a map for you? Because you don't want two site maps. Okay, and the site map was another thing we talked about with the SEO lecture. I'm not teaching you guys how to make site maps. It's not something that you have to worry about. You just need to set yourself up with the main search platforms, webmaster consoles. The main one I cover is Google, but Bing and Yahoo have one as well. And they automatically generate then a site map based on what the crawlers find in your site. So it's not like a site map used to be with big corporate websites and then have a little link in the bottom and say site map. So the user could go and see, oh, that's where all these links are and that's where all that stuff is. That's not, this is a site map for the purpose of the search engines being able to see what's in your site and where it leads to and how it's linked together. So when you set up Google search, it does it for you and Yoast is very smart. It's an intelligent plugin. So it's asking you, do you want to use my site map? Or do you want to use the search site map? I usually just revert to the Google site map. So there's functionality there. And then there's breadcrumbs, which this is kind of an advanced thing. Um, I really don't know that much about them. Somebody's tried to show me how to use them before. Now here's the reason I keep going through the tour and I'm still bringing it up is because this is a great example of something that I could go to Yoast blog and go into the, the uh, table of contents here. Yep, he's got a thing on breadcrumbs right here. And it talks about how um, breadcrumbs are good for allowing your users to easily navigate your site. They allow search engines to determine the structure of your site more easily. They should link back to the home page and category posts of category. Pick one for that to work. Find settings for breadcrumbs in the SEO. They still don't tell you how to put them together. Um, so when I click on breadcrumbs, of course he's got a he's got a plug-in probably for breadcrumbs too, Yoast breadcrumbs. So that's what you'll find with Yoast too is a lot of the advanced stuff, um, and that's I I could have a whole extra lecture on breadcrumbs and I don't really know enough about them to start getting into them, but a lot of the advanced stuff he'll he'll encourage you he or the Yoast team I don't know if it's a he or she or who the heck Yoast is but the 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 makers of these plugins will encourage you to get the other plugins that will help you enhance the experience with the main one. But the main one is all I'm requiring for my course. And um, 
if we go on to the end here then it'll show you some more additions you could do so something that I need to start using and I haven't yet is the additional plugin for videos and this helps you specifically optimize videos on YouTube and generate additional views and get more people watching your videos so it'll it'll help the search engines to know where and when you have video content in your site as well and that's a separate plugin it's a, it's an extension plugin that you add on to the Yoast main plugin so in my Wonder Grove site that I'm going to use as my main demo here I would get this extension I'm not going to do that in the lecture today but so there's lots of cool stuff in here the main thing that you need to be aware of is as soon as the SEO plugin is set up, it's, I mean, it's not just making suggestions. It's like flat out just telling you, okay, here we go. Here are your pages, here are your posts. They're not optimized for crap. We gotta fix them right now. Here's how to do it. It'll literally walk you through what needs to be done bit by bit by bit. So right in here, if I go to a page, let's go to this one on locations and gear, and there's not going to be enough content in any of these pages because I've set this all up as the demo site. Right off the top, it's going to say, hey, you got all sorts of stuff wrong. Okay? And the less content you have, the less messages it will have to give you here. And I have pretty much no rating at all in the traffic lights over here from Yoast, which means it's not optimized at all. It's blank. It's basically just nothing. And that's what happens when you have a blank page. So you need to get this optimized. Posts will offer you to do the same thing. I'm gonna show you how to optimize it, just wait. Um, so this one at least has some content, okay? And there's an image in there. So it's got some more, and I actually got a green one. It says, oh cool, the page title is actually the right length. So it's giving me somewhat of a rating, but it's still, I didn't even make it on the traffic light yet because there's not enough. now. This is where these plugins are so useful because I don't have to go out and do a bunch of research to find out exactly how long my meta title should be. The plugin will stop me before it gets too long. So what it's doing is it's automatically, so all this stuff up here can be edited. Okay, this is your page title. This should match the title that's in here. Okay, which should also match the permalink. So a lot of these things need to match up. That's part of successfully optimizing it as well. Then in here is the URL that shows you where the permalink is going. That should match up too. And then here is actually the meta description. So if you don't have a blank page, what, you, what the Yoast plugin is starting to do now, and this is just in the latest update that literally happened yesterday, like November 24th, 2015, it's automatically generating for you a meta description based on the content from the page. So I don't really have enough content in here really to do much at all. So the meta description is pretty weak, but it's, it's putting it in there. Now, if I click on it to edit it, what is going on here? Oh, it's actually taking it out because it was an auto-completed one, and I can start to type in what I want to have. Okay, so let's say I decide I want to have this stuff in the meta description. Uh, oops. <coughs> And I also want to talk about, uh, learn more about other kite surfboards here at this website. <coughs> Best review site around. Okay, now once I type something in myself, I can then click on it and it's, it's generated. As soon as I get my own content in there, it will turn red if it's longer than 152 characters. So you guys may recall when I first brought this, this came up in the class, I did like a three minute crash course thing on Yoast and it actually gave you, here, I can make that a little bigger, Liam, hang on. It actually gave you a little character count um, inside, inside this box and it, it looked a little different. What Yoast is doing now is they're actually representing the site title and the URL and the description just like you see it in the SERP. So it's, it's giving it to you in a more realistic way. I kind of like the way it's set up now. And instead of giving you an actual character count, what it's doing is it's just turning red if it's too long. So as soon as I take a bit of stuff out, it's not red anymore, which means it's not too long. 
Now that's not a good meta description. And when I go to my site to do a real demo, I'll show you what I mean. Um, the focus keyword is the main keyword or phrase this poster page is about. And this, so if that's what it's about, and this is where I like this plugin, it should be in the title. And it should probably also be in the meta description. And if you're gonna make it the focus keyword, it should also pop up a bunch more times in the actual page. Okay, so you'll be prompted to do the same type of stuff for pages and posts. I'm gonna scroll back down now. And finally, in addition to pages and posts, when you create categories and tags, like here's a category with a description and a slug. The rest of these just have the slugs, so the optimized URLs. If I click on one of these that doesn't have a description, you'll see the description box available for it. But if you scroll down now, you'll also see that Yoast is giving me the opportunity to edit the title, the URL, the meta description for the category, and the focus keyword, just like you can with pages or posts. So as a primary big grading chunk of your project, you have 22 marks going toward the optimization of categories and tags in addition to your pages and posts. Pages and posts are 16 points. The rest of the 22 goes to categories and tags. Um, links and images, actually, sorry, there's, then there's two points each for all the other stuff. It's the primary points come from pages and posts, and then the, the, the remaining six points break down to be categories, tags, and then optimizing other stuff like links and images that should have, uh, this is, and that's gonna come after at the end of this demonstration. So I gotta, I've already made this a bit too long. We gotta get into the actual example here. So if I go over here and I've gone to a page, so this is a page that I've actually been working on a bit. Um, this is an about page, okay? But I don't, I'm not calling it an about because that's not good optimization. And this is what I used to always do in HTML sites. I just call the page about, and then I put a bunch of stuff in there about this, the business or about the product. But I never really use the word about in the content. And that is part of what search engines want to see. They wanna see frequency and consistency of content. So with this much content in here now, I've actually gotten this up to a green rating. I have some stuff that isn't green, some of which I can't even really fix because I have no, I should put some graphics in here. I, I, I probably can come up with a reason to and I haven't done that yet. I'm, websites are never really done. I'm not getting as much traffic on this as I'd like so I could probably add some stuff. But look how cool this is. So there's an entire content analysis section. So the Yoast takes up this whole part of the dashboard. You can adjust this here, this here, this here. So remember how I talked about how meta descriptions is good to add like a call to action. Now learn more isn't the best call to action. But when I tried to type in call Mike for more info, as soon as I got into the red, I knew it was too long. So I had to come up with a way to sneak a call to action in there, but still keep it within the character limit. Oh, there's so much stuff here that's playing a role. If you don't have at least 300 words in a page or a post, it's not considered good content by the search engine. It's not considered optimizable. It's not even worth them looking at. So pages like your contact page in a website are things that are kind of just overlooked by most crawlers. It's just not, you're gonna have pages that don't have that much content. But if you're gonna bother with a post or you're gonna include a page in your site, you need to try and get that much content in there. So it says right here, the text contains 825 words. This is more than the 300 word recommended minimum. So it's giving me this information just by using the plugin. It, this is turning red when I'm too long. This is telling me here, it's gonna tell me if it's only 200 words and it's gonna be too short. It's gonna tell me the page title um, is falling between the 40 character minimum and the recommended 70 character maximum. Okay, now that's just a recommendation. Sometimes your page title has to get a little long but you can see what I've done here. I've named the actual name of the subdivision, and then I've used this phrase that I think is quite key to my users finding this <coughs> website. I think people might wanna look for private stuff in Grand Bend, private community Grand Bend, private subdivision. I added the word gated in there because now the gated communities in town seem to be demanding a higher price tag. 
So this keyword phrase, if I search it by using control F, it comes up in the content. Look at this. Once here, one more time here in the content, one more time here in the content, another time here, and another time here in the content. And that's good. That's called density. So the keyword from my focus keyword appears again in the site. Now it doesn't like, th this is a very specific collection of words. So I had a hard time increasing my density. I, look up here, Liam, can you read that from back there? Cause you're way back there. You're just like, holy cow, I'm like, this is, I, guys, I know this lecture is tough, but this is important stuff, okay? Does anybody know why it only is counting it three times, even though it actually appears four, remember? And I'll give you a hint. Remember how I talked about how important it is to use different levels of headings for optimization? But this is one, two, three, four, five, it appears. And it only counts three. <coughs> Yeah, pretty much, yes. So it, per HTML tag, it's only gonna count it once. So I have it appear in heading one. No, it's actually not in heading one. I should put it in heading one. I have it appear in heading two, three, and four. And then I have it appear twice in the actual content, which is within a paragraph tag. Um, no, sorry, I have it appear in heading three twice, which is weird. So it appears in one heading once, in another heading two times, and in the content two times, which is a total of five times. It's only counting three, because it's only counting one occurrence per HTML tag. Because beyond that, search engines are starting to, now I don't, I don't agree with that in terms of the content, but what it's saying is that, that you should have different headings beginning new content sections about that same topic, and then it can repeat itself more. So. The density isn't high enough for this particular phrase, but I, I, excuse me, I still got the green light because so many of the other things were in good shape. Uh, the focus keyword for this page contains one or more stop words. I actually, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I could have taken that out. Uh, you know what? I guess I don't really need that in there. See, this is why I love this plugin. Now I'm looking at this again. And I've gone back to this so many times, and now I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I don't need that. Stop words are also discussed in Yoast's blog. So if you go to the blog, and you go back to the top, and you go to the index, he'll have a link there, stop words. So it talks about how search engines just don't like these. They're just useless words. Articles, like a, the, and, Liam. Well, that's where, that's where, see, this is where real estate gets really <laughs> tough because I'm talking about this particular subdivision and I, it's hard to repeat that same phrase over and over again in different headings. But if, if you had, like Jacqueline, for example, is doing a kiteboarding review site, right? So she's gonna have a site that has pages about specific kites. So one of the keyword phrases might be the 2015 North Vegas. So it says 2015 North Vegas, and you could have different headings like 2015 North Vegas. Um, the main heading could just be review. And then it could have subheadings, 2015 North Vegas waves, 2015 North Vegas flat water, 2015 North Vegas wake style, 2015 North Vegas strapless. It can have all these different categories um, with the same keyword phrase because that's how the content actually worked out for that. It didn't. I know what you're saying. You, you don't just want to like force it. <laughs> you don't want. I know. <laughs> you don't want to force it. Okay. And you could see here with the example that I'm showing you guys, I haven't really forced it. I actually had private community, private gated community. It came up this many times. I just went back once I figured out what my focus keyword was to be, and and phrased it exactly the same way. <clears throat> so here's me fixing it further, right, to get it even better. If they don't like the stop words, I'm gonna take it out of this. I'm gonna take it out of this. Okay, so I'm gonna take it out of the actual permalink. Oh man, there's something I gotta show you there too. So many things to show you here. 
Um, and then I'm going to go and take it out of every occurrence it, it has in the page. So private Kata community Grand Bend, because I don't really need it in there. They're right in Grand Bend. I'm going to say Grand Bend. Um, and then I'm going to I'm going to still be now I, I should change my search here. Um, I'll talk about that in a second too. Somebody just said I don't even know where to start, but I'll. So in Grand Bend is there. I shouldn't have changed my search so so hastily. Where's the last one? Right there in Grand Bend. So I took it out, and I took it out of all the instances, and now I'm going to update. Wow, I have less green now. What did I screw up? Uh, the focus keyword does not appear in the URL for this page. Um, what did I mess up here? Wondergrove Private Gated Community Grand Bend. Okay. Yeah, did it not update the permalink yet? Sometimes the sites take a bit to update the permalinks too, so you got to give it a little bit of time. Oh, it still says in. Did you see that? It still said in Grand Bend. So it is trying to revert back to the other permalink. How do you edit that? Um, I'm just clicking on it and editing it. Uh, that has something to do with the theme. Um, and don't forget to remind me to do that thing we have to do at the end, too. And don't forget to do that. Uh, yeah, that thing. Uh, the Facebook thing. That was it. Yeah. Um, update. So it doesn't look like I've gotten it out of the domain. OK, uh, the page title, but it does not appear in the beginning. Oh, interesting. So it wants me to have it right at the beginning. OK, I got this out of there. See, so sometimes it does. Oh, it's still here. It's in the focus keyword. I forgot to get it out of the focus keyword. OK, so there. And this is the tricky part about the plugin. So now, once I fix it in the page and the content, I then have to go back and match up this stuff. So it did fix the domain, okay? And they're right, because you don't want those nonsense words in there. Okay, update. Okay, so it had downgraded me to orange there temporarily. Um, I don't know, I'm still at orange now. What have I done? And this is... I know, I really haven't. <laughs> Wonder Grove, a private gated community. Oh, geez, I put it. And this is why this plugin is so great. Because you know how easy it is to make these mistakes? And if you do it this way, the plugin will catch. There, I'm back to green. See? Literally because I, had, I, I had, didn't have a space. Oh, and it's still, what in the... God, did I not update the proper changes? Like it's it's all over the place. I could have sworn <laughs> I recorded this too, so I know it's going to be in my video. Like I went through and I fixed this. In Grand Bend. The reason it's not going up to a higher level is because it didn't actually save my changes. <coughs> um Holy cow. So now everything matches perfectly. I don't know that that's that great for the readability to take in out of everything. Oh, now I've complete. No, there. Good. It's green still. Um, I have no outbound links. Uh, it wants me to try and get the focus keywords to occur sooner on the page. Um, the focus keyword contains one or more stop words. Uh, I thought I had already taken this out. This is from when I first did it. So I'm constantly like fixing things, right? And eventually you get it so that you have the least amount of red alerts with the Yoast plugin and you're in pretty good shape. The rest of these things I could fix, okay? So the copy score is 63.3, which is considered okay to read. So it actually checks the readability of your page. It does so much cool stuff. 
Now, you recall my saying, you can set up a WordPress site in what, 45 minutes, an hour? And then it takes you a long time to do the content. And then it takes you even longer to be constantly fiddling around with this, trying to make sure it's optimized as well as it can be. And guys, as soon as I got this plugin up and running, I started getting more traffic. Now, that also was very dependent and functional on my having it set up in the Google Search Console as well. So two more things to show you, and then we'll finally be done with this. This turned out to be a lot longer than I thought, but I think it's it gives you guys a lot of info that a lot of it might not play a huge role in grading your project, but when you get out of this class, this is the stuff you need to remember, right? And for any of this to work, you have to have at least 300 words of content on a page and multiple headings. So that's where all this time comes in. This takes weeks, weeks, it takes forever to get this stuff put together. Okay, so these URLs that I keep screwing around with, like I want those to always match, um, I want those to always match the page title. And you'll notice that the page title has multiple words and that reverts back to that one setting I was talking about with titles and metas in the SEO plugin. If you go to, um, uh, maybe not titles and metas, I, I think it's general. No, it is titles and metas. Yeah, so that's the, the character <coughs> that it is identified as being the character I'm going to use to separate my words and titles. It says title separator. Now, if I go back to my page, look, guys, look at this. This is important. Okay, that dash, that's a single dash. There's also a double and a triple dash. If you go, not that one, sorry. If you take a look at my, not the front page, sorry, guys which is also optimized fine. If you take a look at my domain here, you'll see that I've separated each of the words with that dash, with that same character. So it is then interpreting that as being the same or seeing this as part of that. Okay, that this exact title, this whole thing is part of the title and it's matching up. Okay, and it'll tell you down here if it's not matching up. Okay, the other thing that you're gonna want to avoid is once you optimize your URLs, you may not want then on your menu for that to come up as this big long thing. And I've already fixed this, but I'll show you what would have happened if I didn't. So in the dashboard, if you go to appearance menus, okay, when you start changing the page title, it will automatically generate that same title in here for your navigation label. So what you then do is you go back and if I hadn't done this already, it would have this big long page title that said Wonder Grove, Vacant Land, uh, sorry, Private Gated Community, Grand Bend. That, it would, that would, would be the title that I'd have here. It was automatically generated. And after the first time I changed it, I came here and put in about. So the fact that the link on the menu is just a one word thing is not affecting the optimization. And it's really only to keep my menu clean. Okay, what it's actually going to is this full URL that has those keywords in it, which is still within the 70 character limit according to the SEO plugin. So that's, that's the, how this thing works in a nutshell. So I showed you how to set it up on your site as a demo and then I went to a site where I'm actually using it and actually noticed some things that I could fix further and showed you how to do that. So it's, it's an ongoing sort of organic process. But once you get it set right, I mean, generally for pages, you should be able to just leave it. And the key is to keep adding stuff like that via posts or new pages or just new content in a page. With a WordPress site, ideally you can do it with posts. So I've got this one set to green. I have some things that aren't green, but they're things I'm not really gonna bother fixing at this point. The density would be a tough one. Um, and now I've got it down to two times again because it's just, so no outbound links appear. The page contains the focus keyword. This is, this is okay, but it could be improved. And I could definitely put some images in there. So I will go and do that. And once I put the images in there, it, it, I should be putting alternative keywords. So if I go to another page, yeah, the Yoast plugin, and the Yoast uh, blog always talk about having those alternative keywords in there. But I, I want to see if the newest version of the plugin makes a comment about whether or not the alternative keywords are in there. 
the image on this page, there it does, does not have tags that contain your focus keywords. Okay, so if you have images, it will start to go into the alternative keywords and tell you how those are optimized as well. But guys, this plugin is awesome, okay? And it, it, what it does is it, it helps you to not miss all the little nooks and crannies of your website where you need to have this content. And this is where you guys are gonna get killed on your grades if you don't do that stuff. A lot of people are gonna make it down even into here and have a couple things that add into that fifth P part for participation and they're gonna pass, they're gonna maybe even get a B, but they're not gonna get A's because this stuff is weak because it takes the most time. Now when you come for your milestone on Friday, I'm not gonna expect it to be green, but I will have expected you to try and put some stuff in there. I'll be, I'll be able to tell if it's auto-generated or not, but you only need to do one page and one post. So Friday, I need, uh, I need you to have changed your menu, so you've customized your menu, even if, if, even if you only have the one page in it. You're not using the default WordPress menu, and I need the SEO plugin in from Yoast with one page and one post attempted to be optimized. Um, at the end here, hang on, Brennan, I'll get you. Give me one sec. I did want to go and Google, like, uh, I want to see if it comes up with anything here. Oh, it does say right here, enter your Facebook URL for your site or your brand. <laughs> which means that it would be a business page. Um, okay. So this <coughs> talks about how it works. So I think it's mainly just gonna be based on the content in there and that and if he says site or brand, you should be able to do either or. And if you're still unsure, like, that's a great question for the forum, right? If you went to one of the WordPress forums and asked about that, somebody would give you the right answer. And this is, I mean, I'm your instructor, and I, I, you stumped me with that one. Uh, based on what I read here on Yoast page, I would be comfortable putting my business link in there and not my main one. And that's what I want to put in there anyway. That's the one that has all the content related to real estate. There's one last thing in here that I wanted to make sure I covered, and uh, I should have covered it when I was going through the plugin itself. So if you go up here, if anywhere you go pretty much in your site, I think, once you install, um, no, it's, it's when you're actually in the SEO menu. It'll tell you if it's connected to the search console or not, and this is how easy it is to connect. You can do it from here. Okay, and you can put the verification IDs in here, or if you're logged into Google, at the same time you're logged into your site, you can do it from right here, which is even easier. So you can get authorization code, it'll ask you which account you wanna associate with, it'll give you a code, you put it in here, you authenticate, and then it will just find the domain in your Search Console account. So for me, I have a bunch of domains in here, when I do that, it just sets it up. So for your project, if you're on localhost, that's not gonna work, okay, you can't do that. So this is not part of the grading for your final project, and which is maybe why it's better I left it at the very end of the video, but you need to understand that there's all these little pieces to the Yoast puzzle that are not that hard to put together, and once you get them all together, your stuff is running well. Like, it is indexed, it is out there, people know it's there, it's working, okay? So I have these already set up with the Google Search Console. I'm using their sitemap, and I've connected through that little step there. I, I use the, uh, the message link up there instead of doing it directly through the Search Console. I think it's easier that way. But again, if you're still on localhost, there really is no point even doing that because you, uh, you can't set up an account for a site in the Google Search Console for a locally hosted site. There's, no, there's nothing to index, it's not on the web, right? So that was the last thing I needed to show you there. And that's it for the Yoast plugin.